Grace and mercy and peace to you this morning from God our Father, from our Savior Jesus Christ who rose from the dead. Uncertainty is just the worst. When I'm uncertain about things, it makes me really hard to plan for what's coming up because I don't know, it might change. It's really stressful and my mind just goes in circles saying, what can I do to try to fit the pieces together? Whenever there's uncertainty, it makes life really hard. And I don't know about you, but that's been my experience this last year. That of all things with COVID, the uncertainty and how everything changes has caused an awful lot of, of stress. You go through all the events and things kept changing, so it's like, what's going to happen next? I don't know. Uh, when people are uncertain, they'll try to latch on to something that's the truth, even if it's not the truth. All kinds of just uncertainty and doubt can creep into life, making it really, really hard. And if that's true of life in this world, it's even worse when it comes to spiritual uncertainty. Uh, there are lots of reasons why people can be uncertain spiritually. Probably the top one is, is what's spiritual is often outside my existence. I can't see God. I, I've never been to heaven and back. And so of the things that make people uncertain in life, one of the biggest ones is this. Is there something that comes after this life or is this life all that there is, being uncertain about what happens after we die. And it's not just, I've never been there, it's you'll have people saying lots of different things. Who do you believe? Who has the truth? Some people say that we're just atoms and when you die, that's it. You decompose and there's nothing after this. They're very sure about that. Some people who are religious will say, well, Maybe life is a cycle and you'll come back as a butterfly or a tree or another human being. Maybe life just keeps repeating itself. The fancy word for that is called reincarnation. Some people are very sure that's what happens after you die. Uh, Christianity says, no, there's only one life and then there is, is heaven. But how, do you, how are you certain? How do you know what comes after this life if, if you've never been there? And that kind of uncertainty can cause a lot of stress. And how do you make plans? It's not just, hey, I don't know if we can go on our family vacation this summer due to COVID. It's not like that. It's, how do I live my life now if I'm not sure what comes, comes, comes next? Uh, am I going to face God and answer for my life? Am I not? What's going to happen then? A lot of people are very uncertain. And that's not new for us. Going back to the time of the early Christian church, people back then there too wondered about what happens after you die. So the verses in front of us for the message this morning come from that letter we read a little bit ago. Uh, Paul wrote to the people in Corinth. Chapter 15 is called the resurrection chapter because Paul talks about the resurrection from the dead. And if you read the chapter, you, you sense there were some people in Corinth, even in the Christian church, who denied that the resurrection can happen. No, people don't rise from the dead. There are other people who said, no, uh, the dead rise, there must be a resurrection, and there was an argument going on inside the church at Corinth of, can the dead rise, is there really a resurrection? And Paul wrote them an answer. It's this chapter called the resurrection chapter. If you want to go home, go, go home and read the whole chapter. Let me give you just a couple verses. These are at the center, and in a way, sum up the whole chapter. Paul wrote this. If... Only for this life we have hope in Christ. We are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. That first verse emphasizes what Paul said throughout about the first half of the chapter. What if there is no resurrection of the dead? Can you think through that a little bit? Paul says, if there is no resurrection, it upends our entire Christian faith. Everything falls apart. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Jesus didn't rise either, if the dead can't rise. If the dead can't rise and Jesus didn't rise, then our sins aren't forgiven. We're, not, we're still in our sins because Jesus didn't rise from the dead. If our sins aren't forgiven, if there's no resurrection, then there is no hope after you breathe your last. There is no eternal life in heaven. And... If all of that is the reality, then Paul's a liar, everybody who wrote the Bible's a liar, and I'm a liar because every Christian preacher teaches the resurrection from the dead. So in verse 19, Paul says, if you'd make a list of the people who have it worst off in the whole world, 
you can put a lot of people on that list, right? Do you read the news? People who are starving. Uh, lately, I've been reading about Ethiopia. There's some horrible things going on there with the Civil War. If you'd make a list of who in the world ought to be pitied more than anybody else, Paul says it ought to be a Christian who puts all his or her hope in Jesus Christ only to find out that there was nothing after, after this. Uh, Paul, a little bit later, says, Why in the world am I risking my life for nothing if there is no resurrection? Paul says, if there's no resurrection, I'd probably buy into the philosophy that says, let's eat and drink and be merry because tomorrow we're going to die. If you've heard that one, that goes back to the Greek philosophers uh, about the time of the New Testament. If there is no resurrection, there is no hope, uh, we ought to be pitied. But that's not the message today. And verse 20 changes everything around because everything I just said is not true. Uh, It's not that this life is all there is, that you die and that's the end. Paul says, no, Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. Uh, So if you want to prove the resurrection, you need to have one person who breaks the pattern. I've never seen myself, someone come back from the dead. But if just one person could come back from the dead, then you'd know that the resurrection is possible And that is what Paul says happened on Easter. Jesus really, truly walked out of his tomb. Alive, physically alive. Not just like he lived on in the minds of his disciples. Some people will talk about that today. Oh, they're living on in someone's memory. No, not like that. The glorious miracle of Easter is that Jesus really rose from the dead. This chapter says that there are 500 people who are eyewitnesses to that. You heard about Mary, Mary Mag- Mag- Magdalene at the tomb this morning, the, the first one to see Jesus alive. The disciples saw him later that evening. Thomas stuck his hand into Jesus' side a week later. Paul had to wait till after Jesus ascended to heaven. Paul was persecuting the church, but then Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus and proved that he really was alive. So Paul says, Jesus has been raised from the dead, and the word he uses is Jesus is the first fruits. In other words, Jesus isn't the last one. He's the first, and others are going to come after him. The promise is all who believe in him are going to rise to eternal life in in heaven. So that list I made before, you can flip it all around backwards. Did Jesus really rise? Yes, he did. Is there forgiveness for our sins Yes, there is. No matter how big your sins are, how many there are, when Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead for you, he took them all away. And there is hope after this. When you take your last breath and close your eyes in death, the promise is that there's eternal life for us. You heard about that before, that God's going to raise us in a way that we are glorified and imperishable forever with him. When that happens, death will be swallowed up in victory. There will be no more death to face, face ever. And the Bible is not some lie. As amazing as it sounds, it is the truth. About life and death, the things that, if you really get at the heart of our human existence, matter the most. And so I'm praying today that Easter would give you confidence Sometimes, even when I talk with Christians, they say, well, I hope heaven's coming. Uh, And I don't always push them on it, but my sense is they're not quite sure. Uh, They really want it to be true, but how do you know for sure that there is life after this? Paul says, for you and me, you don't have to wonder. Because of Easter, you can know that there is eternal life in, in heaven. And I would hope then that that would allow you to live your life in a way that's different. Like I said at the beginning, if you don't know, if if things are uncertain, it can be really hard to plan and do anything. Everything changes. It's really stressful. Uh, Well, you know where you're headed now. You know that you've got eternal life in Jesus. And that can give you certainty and comfort as you live your life. And here are two ways. One is, you can now make a list of some things you know are always true. 
People have sayings like you know, there's death and taxes. Those are the things you can always count on. But Jesus says that in him, you can know some other things are true too. Like, God loves you. No matter else, what else may change between now and tomorrow morning, it's not like you're going to wake up tomorrow or any day and find out that God decided to stop loving, loving you. Your sins are forgiven. That doesn't depend on anything in this world. That is sure. It's not like you have to wonder, is God going to change his mind about forgiving me? Eternal life is sure. God's word is sure. You could make a list of every promise that God makes and there's no uncertainty about what God has promised you. And if that's true, if there are things in life that you can hold on to that never change, then you can face the other uncertainties of life without it getting to you. Is it true that life in this world can shift and go here and there and things are different now than what you would have imagined? Uh, yeah, all the time. God doesn't promise that he's going to make your life predictable or that everything will go your way. But when things change, when the things you counted on, thought you could rely on, when they fall through, you've got something to hold you fast. You don't have to get all afraid and terrified and not know what's, what's coming next. That if Jesus rose from the dead and if my end is sure then I can chart the course through life and even if it goes off track from where I thought I'd be headed, I know where I'm going in the end. I am going to end up in heaven through my Savior Jesus. And so, as I go through life and face all these other uncertainties, I hope I can absorb some of that stress without it getting to me. That these hymns we sing about joy and peace, that that's not just something we sing about, that's something that we experience in Christ Jesus. That the message we share with others is a message of comfort and hope even when some people don't have much that's certain because they don't know, know Christ. That the message of Easter is something that you and I hold on to. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. That is our sure and certain hope. Amen.